Uh, the business owners aren't allowed to go into the buildings because this was determined by the ATF structural engineers as to be unsafe structures. It's amazing, you know, the fire started at 2 o'clock in the morning. I mean, by the time the sun was coming up, these guys had this set up, you know. They, they, it's amazing the way they put it together so quick and started helping people. And then the community came together, helping out the Red Cross, the, uh, the Schenectady City Mission. Those guys have been running over here with clothing and food. And uh, just so many people pitched in to help, these, you know, to help us. You know, people are inherently good. And uh, this, this whole scene definitely proves that. It's just amazing, you know, the outpouring of support. But I knew that I had to get out of there. But I, I really feel that um, that because I didn't panic, you know, and uh, that's why I'm here. You know, my, my buddy panicked, and he's not here. But I didn't panic. I love that man. That man was a Vietnam veteran, Harry Simpson, and somebody has to stand up for him. If nobody else will, I will. Look at the city hall right here across the street. They're going to blame it on anybody, you know? They didn't pass inspection. I've been up and down the elevator shaft. You got to close the door like this. The hallway's like this if you go up the stairs. Come on, man. I really don't think that it should have been passed, even if it, if they did pass it, I don't think it should have been. Sprinkler systems, I do not think that they worked. The landlord said to me not to smoke in the hallway, but a lot, a lot of people were smoking in the hallway and they never went off. On the fire escape, they had like furniture out there, they had garbage out there all the time, that people were just too lazy to bring it down to the dumpster, and I know that's a violation. Um, the other thing is, is that I, when I moved into the apartment, nobody came and inspected my apartment. Like, both of them. They were never inspected. I need a little time to go to get it in, or somebody help me to get it in now. Because when I start to demolition the 100, I don't think I got a chance to recover it in that. So I ask you again, somebody can help me to get it in. My life depends on my business, the life of my grandkids, the life of the many people who love me depend on this business. I got a plan to continue my business in new location. But I need my tools, I need my machines. They say the buildings are so unstable, the chief told me that, that they're very afraid that everything just could collapse at any time. I, have a, I own a couple of properties I own next to each other. So my tenants called me up. You know, so I came running down to see what's going on. The fire was already raging. I, it's like something that you see on a disaster movie, but when you when you actually experience it in real life, it's a bad thing. Right now, I have PTSD. Now I have to see my psychiatrist this week because I'm really I can't sleep. As a matter of fact, where I am right now, up in Holtzfield Inn, up in Castleton, I, I wake up every 15 minutes. I can't sleep at night from the screaming. I can't sleep because um, people are actually were on on the window ledge, dropping down into the uh, down into the ground. I never want to go through it again. I've been through a lot in my life, but this is the worst experience I ever had, and I just hope I never have to deal with it again, like never, because I think the next time that it, if it ever occurs, I wouldn't make it out. Obviously, we're dealing with something that's catastrophic here in the city when we talk about the loss of life in any fire emergency. This one is unprecedented in its given size, and the fact that uh, and it's affected us right now here in our downtown. 
right across from City Hall. I feel bad for the people that you know are affected by this, especially of the uh, loved ones of the of the deceased. You know, they come first, but you know the people that have lost what little they had, you know, uh, to their name, you know, been taken away from them. Um, you know, and I hope they can all rebuild and benefit, and um, you know, I hope the, that some of these benefits that will probably happen in the future help them, help them recoup their losses. I woke up at 4.15 that morning and saw a fire engine outside my window. I did not see any red or blue flashing lights, I did not hear any sirens. I thought they were simply refilling the pumper from one of the fire hydrants that was out there. I walked out at 4.45 to go to work, and it was just like 9-11. I had no clue, and it was just a terribly awful thing. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I would never uh, compare anything to 9-11, where 3,000 people die, and it was a, a terrorist attack on our country. This is an accidental fire. Let's not lose focus of that. But yeah, it's a horrible, horrible human tragedy, no question about it. And finally, the fourth individual who was recovered out of the uh, debris and the rubble. Uh, the medical examiner has yet to be able to make an identification, a positive identification of that subject. We're awaiting additional dental records from the United States military. We were under the impression that um, all missing persons have been identified. You didn't get that from me. Okay. Where did you get it from? because of the ignorance of the city hall. You got homeless people going into a building that they ain't fit for. But it's all about money. It's all about money. You know, how can you ignore people pushing the shopping cart, collecting cans, and then they go into that building, you know? It's unsafe. It's very unsafe. But the city hall didn't recognize that. But they want to open a casino around Erie Boulevard. How are you going to watch that when you can't watch what's going on across the street from you, bro?